It means mean everything, I mean, because it's it's more than just about me. So, I mean, all this hard work on the field and off the field, you know, it just it just built me for this moment. There's a lot of talented players in the race right now for this uh, trophy. Uh, you know, I'm just, uh, just happy I'm deserved a lot and worked hard all, all year for this award. I've been looking forward to this moment since I was an eighth grader. So having this opportunity to put a big smile on my face and be like oh, a kid dream that came true. They're at the top of the class for a reason. Um, they do what they do on and off the field. And that's why they were uh, nominated for this award. And um, I mean, just to, for my name to be mentioned with them guys, it's a pleasure. It is one of the most coveted honors for a South Florida high school football player. The CBS4 Natmar Trophy will be awarded to the player who this season stands out above all the rest. At Hard Rock Stadium, the stage is set for a grand night. Four very deserving finalists are here, joined by family and friends and coaches. And the suspense is beginning to build, as we'll soon find out who will be this year's winner. And capturing this trophy, could become a launching pad for even bigger things ahead. Good evening, I'm Jim Barry. Since 2019, the CBS4 Natmar Trophy has symbolized success on the field and character off of it. And in an area so rich with football talent, it's a steep climb just to reach this pedestal. This award is named after a man who epitomizes success in the community, a Miami product who became a Miami legend, a college star at Florida whose name is now in the Miami Dolphins' ring of honor after a stellar pro career with his hometown team. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Mr. Nat Moore. <laughs> Looking pretty sharp in that Miami Dolphin alumni jacket, sir. 13 years of hard labor. And you earned it. Uh, that's how I got it. Absolutely. You know, this isn't uh, such a great night for these four young men, but I know it's also exciting for you. Why? Well, because this is what it's all about. Uh, all the hard work that the young men put in, the coaches, their teammates, their families going to all the games. And then to be nominated for an award like this that not only brings notoriety to you, but to your teammates and to other players that you play against. So uh, my hat's off to CBS4, and uh, I think FPNL is uh, yes. the sponsor for doing this. Uh, it's great for our kids. It gives them exposure, and it helps a lot of their teammates also get a chance to go to college. And this trophy, you want it to represent more than just exploits on the field. What does it represent to you? Well, it represents that uh, it's about the community. You know, um, the community is what made you. And if you're willing to give back and help others, um, then the community uh, somehow or another prosper. You know, in football, they say you're only as good as the weakest link. So therefore, if we don't help our teammates get better, then we're never going to be successful and win. Yeah. Well, community is no different. It's about how do we put back, how do we help the community become the best it could be? And usually, as athletes or celebrities, we get a platform. Mm -hmm. And it's what we do with this platform that really matters. So once again, my hat's off to CBS4 for, for giving us this platform. And thank you for being an inspiration to us all. Mr. Nat Moore. And we will see him a little bit later in the program. But right now, everyone, it is time to meet our four finalists. First, from Miami Central Senior High School, this defensive end has been a relentless force on the football field. 26 sacks this season alone, 55 over his high school career. At 6'3", 250 pounds, he is among the nation's most sought-after recruits. Please welcome Mr. Reuben Bain. <laughs> 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 
Our second finalist is from the offensive side of the ball. He has played many positions, but blossomed as a receiver. And this season for American Heritage, he has 66 catches with over 1,200 yards and 15 touchdowns. Please welcome Mr. Brandon Ennis. <laughs> Next up, a versatile two-way player, and his time on defense helped make him more dangerous on offense. 40 catches this season, but 10 of those were touchdowns. And on defense, he's also snagged a pair of interceptions. He's a lean six foot one, 185 pounds. Say hello to Mr. Edwin Joseph. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, our third wide receiver of the group has the need for speed. This Edison High School receiver has more than 1,300 all-purpose yards and 11 touchdowns. At 5'10", 180 pounds, he's lightning in a bottle. From Miami Edison High School, please welcome Mr. Nathaniel Joseph. Gentlemen, first of all, congratulations to all of you for making it this far. And uh, it is so good to see you all on stage looking sharp, I have to say. Um, Ruben, let me start with you. Uh, you got the nickname Hurricane Bane. Where'd that nickname come from? Uh, well, it started out with my dad. Um, I'm a junior, so they gave me the nickname. Uh -huh. On the field, he was a, a force to be reckoned with, so they called him Hurricane, and they just passed the name to me. So you're really Hurricane Junior? Yes. Gotcha. Uh, that works for me. Uh, listen, you said just not long ago that you had a dream, and that dream was what let you know which college you were going to play your football at. Now, I, I don't know if you're ready to announce it yet, but if you don't want everybody to know, you can just whisper to Uncle Jim. I won't tell nobody. He didn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it has to be so flattering to have all these schools uh, interested in you. Uh, you even got to ride Nick Saban around. What was that like? It was an amazing experience, um, being able to just to be around what some consider the GOAT of college football and coaching period. So being in the same atmosphere, the same area as him, it was amazing. You drove him around on a golf cart, was that right? Yes, it was a golf cart at his house. You didn't drive too fast, did you? I had to make sure I was safe. Okay, understood. You don't want to scare Nick Saban. All right, Mr. Reuben Bain. Um, and you've got a big game coming up this week in a few days, a state championship game uh, against some school uh, called American Heritage. <laughs> And I believe that we have uh, someone from American Heritage. How about that, sitting right next to you? Can you imagine that? Mr. Brandon Ennis, and, and Brandon, I know you, these teams met uh, last year in the play, early in the playoffs, so this is your opportunity to talk a little smack if you want. Any, anything to say to, to Ruben? Nah, we'll just, we'll just see what happens on Friday. Okay. <laughs> His coach told him to keep it polite. <laughs> I understand. You have been playing varsity football, man, since uh, the eighth grade, I believe. So you've been playing with the big boys for a long time. How do you think that has helped you mature and really understand the game? Um, well, playing with guys like Kenny McIntosh and Zay Flowers that are about to be in the NFL draft this coming year, I mean, it helped me be the player I am today. And without them guys, I don't think I would have had the confidence I did in eighth grade. They kept pushing me, and um, I'm thankful for them. They had faith in you then, and so that probably gave you more confidence, didn't it? Yes, sir. All right. Well, congratulations for being here. Next up, um, and I hope, wish both of you luck in the upcoming championship game. Next up is a, a young man who plays for a team that is, is so used to championships, like they do it year in and year out. Shamanat Madonna just won their seventh state championship, and Edwin Joseph, a big part of that. Uh, do you guys ever get tired of winning over there? No, we, we, no, we don't we wanna get used to winning. Uh, we, is, we work hard for it every week. Uh, no matter who we play, we make sure we still work hard. Like, it's a great team. Um, so we just go every week like it's a regular game. Well, congratulations. And, and you play on both sides of the ball. You play a cornerback on defense, receiver on offense. Which do you prefer? <laughs> um, I feel like playing receiver since I was nine, uh, it helped me, it, help, it helps me in the long run playing defense, like where receivers line up, um, how they line up, it really helps me like know what route they're running and what, how they're running their route. So it makes a difference. And uh, your coach is big on um, a positive attitude, isn't he? How does that translate to you guys? Um, it translates a lot. Um, we make sure we don't 
get too big headed, no matter, um, cause you know we played a lot of good to, good teams like American Her American Heritage, um, Dillard. So the good attitude, making sure we do come back with it every week, um, no matter who we play. So we get all that good game out of the Saturday and come back Sunday ready to work. Stay focused, huh? Stay focused. All right, that's the key to success. All right, uh, and at the end there is Mr. Uh, Nathaniel Joseph. Uh, no relation to Edwin Joseph, right? Just at a, okay, just coincidental. Okay, just, just checking, all right. And Nathaniel, now when you strutted on stage, I mean, you strutted on stage like you're the biggest guy out here, but we could all see that you're not. <laughs> so how does a small man succeed in a big man's game? I mean, it comes from the heart. I mean, just having the heart and the will to go out there and, you know, do what we got to do or do what I got to do and, and just make it happen is, is really what, you know, translate on the field. But, I mean, just being able to have cousins that I played with in the backyard who was, mm -hmm. who was older than me, you know, they, they had the chance to beat up on me and make me tough. So <laughs> that, that took me a long way and just watching them guys. So that took me a long way and, you know, being able to play against older guys in Little League helped me and, you know, got me right the way I'm at right now. Now, a big guy like Ruben, he walks, steps out there and he just intimidates with his size. You have another weapon. It's that speed, right? That's intimidating too, isn't it? Oh, oh man, they scared. <laughs> <laughs> just like Tyreek Hill, right? Yeah. So, you know, they got to respect the speed. I mean, it's God-given. So, I mean, just being able to go out there and just be able to run by somebody and make people miss, you know, that's just my gift. I wasn't the biggest guy, but you know, I got the heart and the speed. So that's what take me through. All right, and one more thing that I know you're very proud of, and that's your grade point average. What is it? 4.1. Listen to that. <laughs> and I'm sure all these young men have excellent grade point averages, and uh, that's a, a reason that they are on stage tonight, just, not just because of what they do on the field, but also uh, setting an example in the classroom. So congratulations to all of you, and we've got an exciting night ahead. Coming up on the CBS4 Natmore Trophy presentation, an all-star panel of analysts. Our experts weigh in on this year's finalists. That and a whole lot more when the CBS4 Natmore Trophy presentation returns. Back to Hard Rock Stadium for the CBS4 Natmore Trophy presentation. You're looking at our four finalists. We'll soon learn who will be the winner. Sitting alongside them, their coaches who have certainly helped them get to this point. And they're gr very grateful, of course, that they are here with them. And joining me now on stage, our big four from CBS. Kim Camper and Joe Rose, you all know them, former Miami Dolphins. They help call the games each and every week. Also with us, Larry Bluestein, the guru of high school football sports. Nobody knows more about it than he does. And my colleague, CBS 4's hardest working man, Mike Cuno, who uh, has interviewed all of these uh, finalists and others who uh, didn't make the cut. But uh, Mike, thank you for your hard work. So Kim, let me start with you. Uh, you're a former defensive man. Let's talk about Reuben Bain. This young man moves mountains. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, this guy. And look, you forget about, you know, all these little guys out here, the running, the quick guys. <laughs> it's all about the big guys in the trenches. Isn't it, Reuben? It's about the guys doing the dirty work in there. And the guy's done dirty work his whole career. And I talked to him before, 6'3", 270. I think the stats were right because I asked him. I had, to, I had to get out of the horse's mouth. How many sacks? He said, I had 29 last year. I said, what happened this year? You fell off. You only had 28. So productivity is not an issue for my man right here from Miami <laughs> Central High, and, and I guarantee you, he's going to be a force to be reckoned in when he goes to reckon with when he goes to the next level. You know, Bain, Kane, I'm, I'm just you know speculating out there about where he's going, but uh -huh. you know, just kind of throwing things out. There. Right. But, yeah. but you know this, wherever wherever he's going to go, they're going to get a great young man. Yes. They're going to get a man that had great parents, and is going to get a man that's going to work hard and going to make their school proud and going to be very productive for them. The total package. Uh, thank you, Mr. Camper. All right, Joe Rose, Brandon Ennis, uh, big target as receiver. Well, I've had a chance to watch Brandon before he was with American Heritage Plantation, you know, varsity football for five years, mm. going back to university school. And um, he was good right off the bat, eighth, ninth grade. He did not play like it. Great instincts, great hands. You saw the catch earlier, and I thought, man, that says it all. He's going to play, and he's going to play right away. He puts up big numbers. He's been highly rated since he's about 12 years old, so it's like nothing new. He's been on all these scouting lists, recruiting lists. Uh, he's special, and there's a reason he's been a five-star player with the way he plays, the numbers he puts up. And, oh, by the way, He's had to punt. He's played corner. He's played safety. 
He's done everything but have to kiss the cheerleaders when this guy's <laughs> had to play. And that was in question one night when they're way out in front. So he, uh, he's special. And uh, all the things he does and uh, the guy to be able to do so many different things, uh, I think he's going to be a big hit at Ohio State. I think still strong Ohio State. Yeah, um, he's going to play right away. He's think, not going to take a back seat to any of the other guys. I think former Dolphin Brian Hartline said, that's a young man that I want. Yes, he does. And, <laughs> and we know Brian real well. Yes, we and he do. Ain't messing around. That's right. All right, Mr. Bluestein, Edwin Joseph, uh, a guy who plays defense and offense, seen as a late bloomer, but boy, when he blossomed, he really did, didn't he? Yeah, no doubt. Uh, if you look up the, uh, the word team player, his picture's right there. Uh, what he did for that team this year as a senior leader, I think that's important. Played everywhere he could to help this team. Uh, a receiver pretty much by trade, but he also is a, a heck of a defensive back. Uh, when they played American Heritage, uh, he and Brandon Ennis went head-to-head -head on both sides of the ball. That just shows you how, uh, how he is. He's a, and this is a Chaminade Madonna team that's gone to state seven straight years. Uh, they're currently one of the top two or three teams in the nation. And without, without him, uh, I don't think that the, they could have achieved what they've done this year, especially against Heritage. He brought them back against Dillard. He brought them back. Um, and I think that he gets so much respect from his teammates and his head coach, Damian Jones, and that's important. At the end of the day, uh, by far, he's probably one of the most respected kids in, in South Florida. That is important, playing like an MVP. And Mr. Cuno, uh, I really got a kick out of it when you interviewed uh, Nathaniel Joseph because he was one of the few guys you actually looked down upon. <laughs> but uh, when you tried to catch him, forget about it. Ray Ray is just way too fast. Yeah, yeah, no, he is. Uh, the first thing that jumped out with Ray Ray talking to him is he mentioned his teammates, his community yeah. first, above, above all else. Uh, when we met all these guys, you can tell they're really impressive. But I got to tell you, within the first five minutes, I knew before the season started, I knew that this guy was going to be end up in the top four. He just had a feeling learning his personality. Uh, but he's as quick as they come, half a dozen touchdowns this year. I asked you about your speed. You know, you always make the first guy miss. You said you want to bring a running back's mentality to the wide receiver position, right? So you make that first guy miss, and then it's, then it's a wrap after that. You like watch that. his highlights. If that first guy doesn't get him down, it's, he's gone. Lights out. All righty. It sounds very exciting. We've got a lot of talent here. Uh, so coming up, it is time for the big reveal. We're just about ready to announce this year's winner of the CBS4 Natmore Trophy. That and a whole lot more when we come back. Right now, we are back at Hard Rock Stadium, and the room is packed, and it is as we are ready to announce this year's winner for the CBS4 Nat Moore Trophy. And now, Mr. Nat Moore, if you would be so kind as to join me. The award is named after him, so we figured it appropriate that he have the envelope with the winner. Okay, ah, don't be cheating. All righty. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the 2022 CBS4 Nat Moore Trophy from Miami Central Senior High School is Reuben Bain. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, my friend. Thank y'all, thank y'all. And uh, listen, I tell you what, why don't we start? I know you, you bench press a lot, but why don't you just hold on to that for a minute? Hold it up so everybody can see what you have earned. Yes, sir. All right. So, uh, Ruben, you, we talked earlier. You said you, you had a dream that things were going to pan out for you. Did you dream about this moment? Uh, yes, I did. I've been thinking about this since I was in ninth grade, as I said before. But I'm just excited right now. I can't even, words can't explain how, how I feel. <laughs> Man, the, there were a lot of cheers when your name was called. That means you've got a big cheering section here. Your family's here. Your coach is here. Um, all of them had a hand in this, right? Yes, sir. I mean, I couldn't do it without the people that said some, supporting me today. Um, my coach, Jamal Sheffield, he pushed me every day in the, uh, on the practice field. Sometimes I may not like him, but I know he's doing <laughs> it for the best. He's doing it for the best of my abilities, and he's just believing in me. Yep. 
Matt? Well, first and foremost, let me say congratulations again. Thank but you. Uh, what I love about you, not, not that you play defensive end, you hurt people, all right? <laughs> but the fact that you pass the credit on to your teammates, your coaches, because football is a team sport. And I promise you, if you go through life treating everything like it's a team sport, how can you help to make them better? You're going to have a lot of success, all right? Yes, sir. Congratulations, my friend, so Thanks. much. And uh, we're so proud of you. And once again, grab hold of this trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2022 winner of the CBS4 Natmar Trophy from Miami Central, Central Rocket, Mr. Ruben Bain. We'll be back to talk more with Ruben, his family, and his coaches right after this. Well, we are back at Hard Rock Stadium, and the suspense is over. We know who the winner is, Ruben Bain from Miami Central. And on stage, boy, we've got uh, a full house of his supporters, starting with his position coach, Jamal Sheffield. And uh, Jamal, how proud of you of, th of this young man? Well, this is a surreal moment. Uh, I was just telling his dad, I remember him coming in as wet behind the air freshman. <laughs> Didn't know nothing, but like that kid, he, puts, he put in the work day in and day out. Like, He's the only kid I know that has everything a high school kid wants, but still puts in the extra work. And uh, we got to give some credit to the uh, original Hurricane, okay? Original Hurricane Bain. Uh, tell me about how you think you passed along the love of the game to your son. Uh, it's just a proud moment for me. Yeah. Seeing him do what he do, how he do it. And it's been a very long process, <laughs> but... We're here. Absolutely. He work hard from morning to night. Mm -hmm. uh, just very proud. Very proud. All right. You always listen to mom? Uh, sometimes. Oh, OK. We'll let mom talk about that. Uh, this is a, a moment that a parent can relish for, forever, isn't it? It is. And I'm so excited to be here. And I'm excited for him with this opportunity. He's He's an amazing kid, and um, I'm just so proud of him. All righty. Well, that's got to do you well. All right. Uh, we had a little chat before the show, that, and he told me that if he happened to be the winner, he wasn't going to wait till later to reveal where he's going to play his college football. He promised me, Uncle Jim, <laughs> that he would make the big reveal tonight. So we're going to break some news on this show tonight. Mr. Ruben Bain, you had 27 scholarship offers at last count. You narrowed it down to two finalists. Tell everyone in South Florida and beyond where you will play your college football. Um, well, for the next three to four years, I'll be taking my talents to the University of Miami. Is that Mario Cristobal calling me right now? <laughs> I guess it was a tough choice, but also an easy choice, right? Explain the process and how you settled on being a cane. Um, well, the love I had from the coaching staff was second to none, really. Um, I talked to Coach Cristobal and the whole staff every day. Uh, even if it was times I didn't want to speak, I spoke. So mm -hmm. they had an opportunity to have a head coach on my phone, and it seems like he's my position coach on my area recruiter. It was something I couldn't take for granted. So I just decided to take the opportunity by the hands, and, and I'm a hurricane. All right. And so everybody, you can stay right here and watch him play. How about that? That's the beautiful thing about it. Congratulations, man. The best is yet to come for you. And uh, we're so proud of you. And uh, we want to congratulate not just Ruben and his family, but uh, also to each of our finalists, because for all of you, we know that the best is yet to come. Uh, again, we must say a big thanks to the Miami Dolphins and Hard Rock Stadium for being great partners and hosts for this event. And on behalf of all of our guests and the entire CBS4 sports and production team, we thank you for being with us tonight. I'm Jim Barry. Thanks for watching this year's presentation of the CBS4 Nat Moore Trophy. Good night.